Yuzu is not and never was an emulator and we all need to understand this. And the more we get this through our thick heads, the more we understand just how much more of a tragedy it was that Nintendo killed it. Instead of being an emulator, Yuzu was more like a translation layer. And I'll explain the difference between one and the other. You need to know this, mother flipper. Do not click off. This is important. I'm gonna go over the basics a bit for people who might not know. An emulator basically emulates, as the name says, a certain kind of hardware. Meaning that if you're playing PlayStation 2 on your phone, your phone pretends to have the hardware of a PlayStation 2 so that the software on top, aka the game that you're running, thinks that, hey, there, there's nothing out of the ordinary here. I'm running on the PlayStation 2 when in fact you're running on a state-of-the-art phone. That's emulation, and this is very taxing in many, many ways, especially performance. Because when you run an emulated game, you constantly change information between the program and the emulator. And this is done fairly slowly because with each instruction you have to emulate that hardware. This usually happens because we emulate things from different architectures. For example, your Windows laptop is built on an architecture that we call x86 and PlayStation 3 was built on PowerPC. In order to emulate PlayStation 3, your x86 laptop has to pretend that it's PowerPC hardware and this makes things so much more complicated and slow because each instruction that goes back and forth has to be emulated. Meaning that you will never reach the native speeds that your host PC or your host hardware is actually capable of. When you do emulation, you always have a performance penalty. But not with Yuzu, that was the beauty of it. You're not emulating across architectures. The Nintendo Switch, for those who might not know, was built on ARM, just like our phones, just like our tablets, just like the most modern MacBooks. Everything with long battery life runs on ARM these days, and so did the Nintendo Switch, just like your phone, meaning that the situation was different here. All the things that I said about emulating across different architectures, that didn't apply to Yuzu, because the Nintendo Switch itself, hardware-wise, was nothing more than a very old phone. Its SoC, system on the chip, was basically an NVIDIA Tegra X1, an old processor released by Nvidia in 2015, so it's more or less ancient by this point. And because it's an ARM SoC as well, your phone or tablet or whatever would technically, in a perfect world, be able to run all Nintendo Switch games at an almost native host hardware speed. Because all it has to do is to translate the API calls, aka translate the way in which the game would speak with the Nintendo Switch operating system, and convert that into something that Android, which your phone has, would understand. But there would be none of that deep emulation where you would basically pretend that your hardware from another architecture. And this is a very beautiful thing. Well. It was before Nintendo freaking killed it, because this meant that if Yuzu would have gotten way more development and way more polish, it could have ran everything on basically any phone or tablet, as long as you cough cough owned the games. But the performance penalty under Yuzu would have been super small compared to emulating PlayStation 2 or, god forbid, PlayStation 3, which would make your phone or tablet have an anxiety attack once a PlayStation 3 emulator would come to mobile. So Nintendo basically shut their pants. There's no sense to sugarcoat this. They were royally screwed. Imagine this, every freaking device on this planet could have, for all intents and purposes, become a Nintendo Switch. And not only that, they would have become the most open version of a Nintendo Switch possible where you could sideload everything. And Nintendo still technically sells and maintains the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch is not technically a retro console, it's a console in active development. They still put a lot of resources into it. This would have cost them a ton of money, unless they would have been a more ethical company and people would just buy the games to still support the developers. But of course there would always be people pirating because are he matey. That's how we are. Some of us are Eastern Europeans, which, I mean, for legal reasons I have to say that I never pirated and I never will. But I'm just gonna 
mention that all of my neighbors growing up had stacks of CDs with every conceivable app and game, and for some reason some douchebag put a crack folder on those CDs. So what's the conclusion here? Did Nintendo do good that they killed Yuzu? Of course not. It was a perfectly legal emulator, quote unquote, because people still refer to Yuzu as an emulator, but I think they were very anxious about seeing Yuzu develop as fast as it did, because Yuzu could have really, really hurt Nintendo from a financial point of view, especially because, let's face it, the Nintendo Switch is one of Nintendo's biggest cash cows right now, and having a billion plus devices on the planet being able to emulate your console is a nightmare scenario, this would give PTSD to every company. Personally, I'm still super pissed off that Nintendo killed Yuzu, and I'm not really that confident about Suyu. I'm a former developer, I've looked over their commits, okay, they are junior level, maybe mid-level commits, I'm not gonna say anything bad about those guys, I appreciate what they're doing, but it will be a long time since we see a proper incarnation of Yuzu. And I think each and every time that incarnation becomes good enough, Nintendo will have a panic attack. So tell me what you think, did I get anything wrong here? Do you have a different opinion? Do you think piracy is bad? Good for you. If you think that moral high ground is the best. You know, uh, or do you think that Yuzu royally screwed by somehow monetizing the development through their Patreon? Personally, I think that's where they messed up. And it set a very ugly precedent. Every developer working on any emulator suddenly got way more scared of that 2 point something million fine that they had to pay in reparations than they would have been afraid of any kind of takedown that they could have received. Because nobody wants to wake up in debt to Nintendo now, do they? But anyway, tell me what you think. I'm genuinely curious how you feel about this. I am personally so freaking upset at this because I only tried Yuzu after Nintendo went after them. I didn't really know much about the Nintendo Switch before all of this happened. And after I tried it, I was pissed off because I know it won't get any better than this. And I see the large potential that Yuzu had and I can't help but be super sad. I really hope all of the people at Nintendo that took initiative with this, I really hope they'll meet me in the ninth layer of hell after I die, because let's face it, bad people go there. But enough of my rambling today. If you love what I do, don't forget to subscribe. The channel is super small and honestly, I need all the help that I can get with this. Don't forget to subscribe and to like, leave comments, tickle the algo. And if you really like what I do, consider becoming a channel member or a Patreon. Your name will appear in each of my videos as a sort of thank you from my end. I love seeing that I have people having my back and you encourage me daily. And I love you for that. I truly do. You're here and nothing will ever change this. So I guess we'll see each other in the next clip, my sweet nerds. Until then, take my hand and let's not like Nintendo together, the douchebags.